Well, good morning. We've got, I guess, a future videographer here. Welcome to the Max Happy Homestead. I'm Colby, this is Harley and Sayla. Uh, mommy will come out a little bit with the other kids, but uh, it's kind of early. We just got some things that we've got to get done today. I'll show you the update on the cows, show you the update on the agriculture beds, since we didn't get to see those in the, the light from the last video. So we'll give you some updates there. I also want to show you uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Um, we we don't do a lot of social media, but my wife sometimes will look on social media, post stuff for the Max, and uh, every once in a while I just love getting on there and looking at the marketplace. Just people selling, if it's junk or if it's good things, a lot of times people are just getting rid of stuff. And for us, we found two things that, that benefited us. Anything that we can expedite, speed up a process of our chores, or a new build that we need to do, but then also we could find other pieces that could help start that process. Um, we did, we found it. So first of all, we got these food grade buckets. Now, if you buy these on Amazon or anywhere else online, um, they're about quadruple what we paid for them. Well, uh, under the crazy laws of our regulation of um, food industry, uh, these came from Greece. They're food grade buckets. They held, uh, this one had, uh, olives in it this one had peppers in it i think these other two had olives in it too so uh we're we're not too far from baton rouge and new orleans and some of those restaurants down there order these big whopping huge buckets full of food so there's a guy that, that buys these because they can't use them so they kind of have to sell them for whatever they can get for them and so this guy comes around and sells these things too well these things are cheap and they've only been used once. I mean, that's all they can be used legally for. So we're going to take these 58-gallon buckets. We're going to make a pig water out of one of them and also make uh, chore buckets out of the other. So what we'll do is put them close to every set of chickens, every set of pigs. We're moving our pigs a little bit further away from the house, which is where the feed shed is. And we're also going to move the, um, or excuse me, we got the meat chickens coming in and also the permaculture chickens. So those will be not close to where the lay-in hatchery is or where our American guinea hogs are so our food will be a little bit further away so this gives us an opportunity to utilize those buckets in a little bit better way and make it a little bit easier for us now I'll show you one more thing that we picked up um, that i thought was a, a pretty good buy um, you know we have to build a new uh, two new chicken houses one is going to be a chicken tractor kind of like the joel salatin chicken tractor and it will go uh, for our meat chickens the other is we need something that we can maneuver around inside uh, the permaculture chicken bed to keep their, their, their bedding not in one spot. It'll be moved. So we found these two online. We found this old hen house here that somebody was just trying to get, get rid of for hardly no money. As you see, it needs some work. It's, it's old. It's got a piece of wood missing here. But I can salvage what's there because I paid less than what the wood is worth on it. So I'll be able to salvage what it is there. And then here, this is the old, old rabbit pen and quail pen that I got, the same guy had. And again, it needs a little work, but for the, the I didn't want to pay anything for it because he was just going to get rid of it. So it's going to be a great, great help for us because we can rip off all the old wire, fix the wood on it, and make it the way we need it to be made for our farm. And it's for less money, takes less time, and we don't have to use our new wood for this project. So we're excited about those two things. We're going to go and get that started today. We do have a lot of other projects. We'll give you the updates on the cows, as you see over there. We didn't get to update you on the last video. And I know we have a, new, a lot of new subscribers, so we want to give them some updates too. Uh, just so you can see the permaculture beds, or excuse me, hugoculture beds, we have um, the lettuces, the, the kale, uh, broccoli, cabbage, all pretty much in this side. We've got some more char, uh, Swiss chard next to the broccoli and also the cabbage over there as well. So, and some cauliflower. So what we've done is, uh, you see right now we've kind of, it's got moisture from the ground. So some of it's not standing up, but it all looks really good. Um, when the sun comes up, it all kind of bounce right back up. But we've got a good fresh water on it this morning. Uh, and they're, all the seedlings are doing good. Now, someone asked, why did we plant these so close? Good question we know that we're going to have to come in and weed some of this out. We know we may lose some of it because of crowding, but we'd rather overplant and then if some stuff doesn't make it, that's okay because we have other stuff right next to it. If it gets too full, we can always weed some out. Uh, we do know that insects will get to some of it. So we try to overplant because we had the seeds, we had the soil blocks, it didn't cost us anything extra because it was mostly our seed anyway. 
um, or either local seed or MI Gardener seed that we had from last year. So it just makes sense for us to do this this way. There's some broccoli already not doing well. As you remember, some of the broccoli looked kind of leggy. It just didn't seem like it was gonna make it. So what we've done over there is we've also direct sowed some broccoli in that area as well. Now, just wanna give you an update there. We're gonna get this stuff unloaded, go back over there, get those pails, and then we will start the day. I got the bottom or the excuse me the top off of it so now we're gonna flip it over and make it the bottom see how it works from there boom so now we just got to I'm gonna cut these off and we've got our chicken tractor I'm gonna put a piece of tin over here so that way it keeps them encapsulated put some tin on the sides back here so it gets some place to stay dry but um easy enough i've got about 15 or 20 bucks in this one so less time less money little uh little maintenance and changing on it we're good to go you see what i'm doing i'm actually cutting these off so you see i got two more to cut i'll cut this it's already got basically lath and put in basically with these two by fours for extra bracing for the tin we'll put tin on top of it drag it by this so i, I hooked it to itself up top and then I did another one so when you pull it it's actually picking up at the same time it's moving so it moves easy enough for me to pull it is very heavy but the whole purpose is now a raccoon or anything like that can't get enough weight under it to pick it up and get under it the only thing is just worried about snakes and things like that but so we've got this done we're going to take those other two off put the piece of tin on it and this basically will be finished chicken does okay in the coolness it's when it's cool and wet is when it's dangerous for a chicken to die uh, so if we can keep them dry coolness won't affect them so we're gonna go ahead and put a few more pieces of uh, tin just right around the edge here and that should do everything we want it to do well it is definitely not the prettiest but it is done so what I've done is closed up the back back there and put some kind of some wind guards and some high spots where the rain won't blow in on them and then again i'll have a little platform in there built up to where they don't have to be on the ground if it's raining and things like that so it is done i got the rope tied to it where we can haul it by hand or if the kids need to get it on the ranger they'll be able to hook behind the ranger and it just pulls on and we're just gonna move them in that so that is where the meat birds will go so they'll start off there and then we may get a little uh, just a little small chicken wire fence right around it just so they can come out of the little coop and then again we'll just pick it up and move it every day so i think You want to go back and watch what rotational grazing does and also keeping them on fresh new paddocks uh, and along with our natural fly sp spray and i don't know if you've ever tried our fly spray but it does well and you see there's no flies well, there's no flies flying anywhere and it's it's warmed up to about 85 to 90 uh or excuse me 75 80 so i mean it's it's warm enough for flies to be out but they are not out All right, we have finished out a very busy day. Misty messing with chickens and working inside. 
and doing homeschool on Saturday. Actually, wait till you see our costumes for this fall. I know, she's been working, been working on, on those. And so what? that's what we're actually working on right now since we've all been farming all day. We actually have been running. So this is our time that we get to hang out and run together. So we're going to run our farm all the way down and all the way around and uh, have a good time. So we're ending this video with uh, something a I hate. A fun run. No, I actually hate running, but we run because it's good for us.